we do want it to be interactive and at the same time we just want to keep a little bit of control um, and there will be time for a bit of an interactive discussion towards the end of the session. I'll introduce Marek in just a minute, but uh, some of you know me from, uh, from Master Data Management. We've done a little bit of a, re a rethink of our, of, of our offering, and I just want to share that with you a couple of slides. So really what, what, what I, I believe we're trying to do is, is we're focusing on, on four key areas now as a business, what, what I call data transparency, which is to easily find, understand, and access the data you need. And, and this is one of the key areas where, where a product like Manta and Data Lineage falls in. The data integrity space, which is around del delivering trusted data for operations and analytics. This is an area we've been playing in for a very long time. The data privacy space more and more, which is about protecting the fundamental rights of your staff, customers, and suppliers. And then last but not least, our data, in uh, data literacy space, which is around training, education, and certification. Um, so that's really, a, a, in a nutshell, simplistically what our business does. We've been around for a very long time, for those of you that, that don't know me, and, I, and most of you do, but I just thought for a change, maybe throw, throw a slide up. So we, we've been around for nearly 15 years, but a bit more than 15 years. And really, as I say, we try to bring this holistic approach of, of building data management competency through education, through consulting, and through best of breed tools. So today we're here to talk about data lineage. So I'm just going to do a couple of slides and then I'm going to chat with, work with, with Marek and we're going to do a demonstration for you. But when we're talking about data lineage, we're talking about a map of the data journey. So it was quite interesting to me that, that uh, Howard used the road as, as the picture to advertise the event today. And that's exactly what data lineage is about. It's, a, it's about a map of the data journey, which is where did it start? What was the stops along the way? And how did the data change over time? And why do we need to do that? Well, part of that is around regulatory compliance. So, you know, we've got customers using us, to, for example, for radar compliance and for other regulatory uh, compliance where they need to be able to prove and show where data has come from and how it's been changed before it was used to deliver uh, regulatory reports. We want to be able to increase transparency. So that's really about understanding data. That's about making data accessible to people. You know, a really interesting use case talking about data privacy is to use lineage as part of your um, as part of your journey for achieving compliance by saying, for example, if I've got an email address in one system, I've identified that as personal information. Where can I track that email uh, to using Lineage? How can I trace that email's movement through my applications so that I can tag it in multiple places? I can identify my um, I can I can identify my personal data in more than one place. So this is all around transparency and understanding the data, and you'll see that really nicely in the demo. Then it's around unlocking the potential of a governance solution. So I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail with a couple more slides. But really, you know, where, where we came into it and found Mant and started working with Mant was through our relationships with data catalog vendors, where we found the data catalog is meant to be the single view of, of you know, the data 360, the view of all of your enterprise data. But the data catalogs tend to be quite limited in the data that they capture around an organization. Um, and so what data lineage does is it, it basically extends the technical view. It gives you a more detailed view of how data moves to your organization. And I'm going to touch on that again a little bit later. And then last but not least, I like to talk about enhancing business agility. And, and you know, a straightforward example here is, is moving, um, for example, a data warehouse that you may have on premise into the cloud to modernize your, your data architecture. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to unpack the business logic and the, and the data logic that's been built into your existing data warehouse and other solutions that you might want to modernize that would stop you from doing the work. So what, what data lineage does or automated data lineage does is it very quickly gives you a picture of the, of the logic that's embedded into systems that allows you to untangle that logic and to, for example, plan a data migration much more quickly um, and to enhance business agility, get to where you need to get to. So explaining unified lineage. Really, what I'm trying to show with this slide very simplistically is we think about lineage typically where it's been positioned by, by tech vendors in the past has been, for example, from an ETL vendor. So I might have an enterprise ETL solution that's moving data out of various source systems into, for example, an enterprise data warehouse. And it's possible that I might be able to have a view of those data movements, those transformations, what's happened to the data but it's going to be limited to those data movements that occurred within that specific environment or that specific tool. 
So it's, it's a, typically a view of only some of the data flows in your organization. Similarly, with the data catalog, catalogs are typically quite good at being able to ingest the data schemas and some of the information around the tables and, and, the, and the rows and columns of data, but they're not very good at understanding the movements of data. So in practice, what does the, your environment or most environment probably look more like? Well, what we often find is that within those source and target environments, there's code, there's, there's stored procedures in my, in my source environment, there's stored, stored procedures in my data warehouse where there's actually data movements and transformations happening within the data warehouse, typically in a completely different programming language or environment to the environment you know, of my ETL environments. I might have some kind of reporting uh, system, you know, I might have Power BI or, or Click or Tableau, and there's reporting logic and, and code, again, transformations happening within uh, my reporting environment. And the reality is that I might have data flows coming in and out of my source and my target system, which again, might be completely different uh, environments. It might be Java code, it might be COBOL, it might be SSI, SSIS scripts, where um, my, my enterprise ETL was something more robust. So we often end up with a hodgepodge of technologies and a very complicated set of flows and movements of data through the organization. So unified lineage is actually trying to get a handle on this bigger problem that I'm describing here, where with one technology, we can get a picture completely end to end of all movements of data throughout our enterprise. So that's really where Manta fits in. And how, do, how does Manta work? Well, the tool automatically connects and crunches uh, custom SQL, ETL, and BI slash reporting code, documents the lineage, and then pushes that into a, a visualization environment. Uh, Manta's got its own environment, which is where Marek is going get to get, get into in a few minutes and actually uh, show us in a bit more detail. Or we can also push metadata into independent data governance solutions. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of that. And typically, that would be to bring the business logic, the, bus the business context, context into sync uh, with the technical context and the technical lineage we're getting from, from Manta. So very brief visualization of... Um, Manta, as I say, we're capturing data from a, from a variety of different sources, and we can see at a glance, well, the national ID number flows through these two mm -hmm. tables, it goes through the following transformations, and it gets put into the following target table. So it's showing us that that end-to-end -end lineage for that particular flow. We can take a similar lineage and we can push that into our data catalog. So off the shelf, Manta connects to us about seven different data catalogs, so this one is a screenshot for, for Informatica's Enterprise Data Catalog. The other one that a lot of people are moving towards is Watson Knowledge Catalog. So whether you're in IGC or in Watson Knowledge Catalog, we can connect to that. And then, you know, the Calibras, the Infogixes, and a bunch of other tools out there on the market we connect to as well. So that's a very brief introduction. I don't want to get too much into slides and presentation. What I want to do is I want to hand over to, to Marek. Marek is the Customer Success Manager from... Uh, from Manta, so he's he's based in the Czech Republic, and and he's uh, one of the team that looks after us here in South Africa and supports us. So as usual, I thought it would be nice for you guys to have a different voice and to hear somebody different talking about these concepts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop for the moment presenting, and I'm going to hand over to Marek, and he will take you through a short uh, a short demonstration of Manta. Um, are there any questions while we wait for that handover to take place? Gary, if I could ask you. Um... You know, certainly what I've seen in, in tools like Solidatus and that where you have uh, almost a link from your regulatory taxonomy um, and, and you can then flow that through from that. Are you guys linking to those taxonomies? Marek, maybe you can answer that question. I'm not sure if I understood it. So, so if, it's, if it's a business catalog, Howard, if I can try and understand if what you're asking, if you're asking about a business catalog, what we would do is we would provide the technical layer underneath that, and then there would be a mapping within the catalog. So I don't know Solidata specifically. No, what I'm, I'm saying is, so what I've seen in Solidata, for example, you can have your BCBS 239 taxonomy, um, and you can almost see where the data comes from to that, uh, and, and in line with that taxonomy. So they've introduced a lot of the support for existing regulations. And, and the definition mm. of this field. Right, 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 right. So in that way, um, Manta is more of a purely technical lineage tool based. Okay. There okay. definitely are, let's say, capabilities for 
adding certain groupings of the various objects in the environment or giving them various attributes. There are also many interesting features coming, which would also allow uh, for further, let's say, tagging of the various wow. objects. But overall, it's very good to, let's say, understand Manta more as an automated solution to really define what the environment looks like. Okay. But all right, um, if that's all the questions, uh, thank you very much, Gary, for the initial presentation. Thank you for the introduction. I would actually like to begin this uh, with a question to you as well, Gary. And I'm right here a bit putting you on the spot, but why would you say from your experience, data lineage, obtaining it is difficult? Why is it, why is it necessary to have these solutions such as Manta why is it difficult to handle lineage manually? So I, I think I touched on that in, in the uh, one of the slides I put up, mm. but fundamentally it's around volume and complexity. So, you know, and in an example with one of the customers that, that, we, that we're dealing with and without mentioning names, they've got literally thousands of individual SQL scripts and individual transformations and, and, and processes that are, that are moving data. And to try and work through that manually, you know, even if you said it's going to take you an hour per script, which is which is probably an unrealistic, um, an unrealistic estimate, it could take them tens of you know tens of thousands of man hours to try and document the, the, the scripts, and then you've got to maintain that and keep it up to date. And those scripts are being changed uh, regularly in terms of new business requirements or being added to. So it's just it's a volume and complexity problem. Right, right, right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I also like that you've added the fact that they are going to be changing. This is a thing that we are going to also be seeing in today's demo of Manta. It's really important to also really put this into the words that the environment is going to be changing over time. It's never going to be staying the same. Perfect, perfect. So let's go. Um, first, firstly, very quickly, I will just show you a very quick presentation so you have insights into our organization, into our product. Um, really swiftly, and then we'll be taking a look at the real demo of Manta. Now, Manta, we are an organization, we are a Czech American organization founded in the Czech Republic, and we essentially help our customers who are typically mid sized, large sized enterprises manage their end to end data lineage across the entire data lifecycle. Through that, uh, the main, let's say, use cases that our customers use us with or four are three use cases, um, typically being from regulatory compliance perspective, data governance perspective. Uh, so as you were, for instance, mentioning BCBS or other similar approaches, having to prove exactly what data sets are being used, how you calculate various numbers, or the fact that you behave to the data in a certain way to the environment. It's also very important that, for instance, um, there is no private data in certain reports or somebody cannot access them or something similar does not access them. All of that goes to data lineage. The other common use cases that we see are standard data ops. So for instance, if we consider impact analysis or root cause analysis, both of these are directly going to data lineage. If somebody would ask the question, how come my report stopped working? That simply is to mean that something changed in the data lineage pipeline. And third, very common use case that we see Manta used for that Gary was also touching upon was migration. Um, it can be on-prem to cloud, it can be any other migration, but at the end of the day, any migration, what it's going to really require is untangling the environment, figuring out exactly what is there, how is it implemented, what it does, and of course for architects for the new future environment, also figuring out answers such as how do we make it in a good way, how do we make it optimal, we really need to understand exactly what it is. So the way that Manta works is that we automatically extract important metadata from the systems. So we connect to databases, we connect to ETL repositories, we connect to uh, reporting tools and so on and so on and extract meaningful metadata from them. The really important note here is that Manta is only going to be taking a look at the metadata. So really, transformation logic, table definitions, and so on and so on, but not the data within. After everything is extracted, Manta analyzes the actual metadata in order to, first of all, understand what it is, of course, so what tables there are in the environment and so and whatever else it finds, but more importantly, finds the relationships between the objects, so which views are built upon which tables, 
which procedures are taking data from where, what transformations do they do? And through this process creates a complete end-to-end -end lineage graph that first of all is accessible through Manta's own visualization. But there are also options within Manta to either integrate out of the box with third-party solutions. So Gary was, for instance, mentioning uh, that there's data governance solutions which often have capabilities of visualizing lineage, but not so strong at, let's say, um, analyzing it automatically. And that's exactly where we come in and we are able to enhance these solutions, provide them the lineage to really provide a stronger data governance platform, for instance. Now, with regards to what Meta can do, uh, I would just quickly say very swiftly that, of course, it is possible to very quickly perform any kind of analysis of data lineage. It's not necessary to manually go through the code. It is possible to not only integrate lineage with certain, let's say, solutions, but also really into certain processes, into practices that are being done by people themselves, whenever there would be any kind of coding, have to be done any kind of impact analysis. It would be very easy to just have the people actually implement Manta in their efforts. We at Manta really very much focus on ensuring that the visualization is easy to understand, even when the lineage is complex, even when the environment is very difficult, we really strive to show what matters. And further on is simply just increasing better understanding of the environment. I'm not going to bore you with the details. And there was the question that I was posing to Gary and that I think Gary answered extremely well. It's really important to also focus on why is it difficult to solve this problem of data lineage? And Gary was definitely correct in saying that the there is just too much of code. There is just too much metadata. It's growing. There is also new practices being done, which once again grow more and more in metadata size. So it's just simply start being realistic. They're going more and more complex. Like, sure, you can say that some procedures, some calculations are very trivial. But on the other hand, some pieces of code, you need very, very, very skilled senior architects to really tell you what they do. It's very difficult solutions. And sometimes truth is that people don't even know anymore. For, for instance, we see time and time again that, for instance, some solutions have been written in COBOL. And today, unfortunately for, let's say, the institutions which are running COBOL, there's many people who just, there's very few people rather who understand COBOL. And they would like to decommission the solutions, but frankly, they no longer really know how they work. So even those things can occur, which is exactly where once again lineage helps. But what we are going to take a look at during the demo again is really focusing on, let's say, the rate of change itself. We'll be taking a look at how important history is for data lineage, and we'll also be taking a look at how much things change in the environment. And it's, let's say, the third big reason why manually solving data lineage becomes nigh impossible. And I hope I did not bore you with the presentation. And let's just look straight at the demonstration. So right here, I have an initial view of Manta right after logging in. What we can see here is the view of repository. I can see all of the technologies which Manta has scanned automatically out of the box. So for instance, I can see Hive, I can see Microsoft, SQL, Informatica, Parse Center, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, if I wouldn't have something, I wouldn't see it here. So let's say that I would be interested in my Oracle system. Within an Oracle, I have these schemas, I have it, and within these schemas, I have various tables. For any of these, I can go to any level of detail I wish. Let me just take a look at the lineage for the CRM client table. So likely this is some kind of a table which contains an import from CRM, what that's being used to I do not know currently, and it's not even important. And I really want to see how this data is being used in my systems. I can, of course, specify certain visualization perimeters if need be. Uh, since this is going to be a quick demo, I'm not going through all of these. I would just mention that they are there. If you want to know more about the visualization options, we can, of course, uh, discuss those in the Q&A section. And right here, what we're taking a look at is the lineage view. Now, I would like to first of all focus, focus completely out, zoom out completely and focus on what the lineage even looks like in the first place. Because what I can see here is that there are these nodes, these boxes in the graph, 
and they are connected with these edges. So the nodes themselves do represent the objects in the environment, so tables, views, et cetera, et cetera, and the edges denote flow of data. Now, the interesting part is that the nodes have different color coding to them. So for instance, in the center branch of the graph, there is these peach colored objects. In the top of branch, there is this, these light blue objects and these light green. And in bottom branch, there's darker shade of green as well as light shade of green. Now, what these colors actually represent are different, are different technologies. So for instance, right here in the center, I am looking at Oracle related objects where the data is being picked up by an Informatica Power Center workflow and being pushed right into a Microsoft SQL database. Similar to that, there's an SSIS package at the bottom or project pushing data into a Microsoft SQL database. So already, even without, let's say, investigating exactly what happens with my data used from the CRM export, I can already see that it's fairly used being well, fairly important to the environment since it's picked up by two different data integration solutions being used internally, and there's two different databases somehow using it. But now is the big question, of course. I would, for instance, want to know exactly how it's being used internally. So I can see that right here, and even on this sample, even on these three nodes, we are going to see so much. So for instance, I can see that the CRM client table is going through this merge procedure or import procedure right here into the party table. Now, let me just open these up to attribute level. We will quickly see that the lineage graph does get far more convoluted. Of course, once I want to see lineage, I can just select an object and I see it completely highlighted. In the blue color, I see the upstream where my data is coming from. In red color, I see the downstream. Now, the really interesting question that I could have, be it me as, let's say, data engineer, data scientist, or really anyone working with the environment, I could go, okay, but what I want to know is it actually what this import procedure does. I can see that it's going into a table called party, but what I don't know, is it just one-to-one -one movement? Does it just move it there as it is? Does it somehow change the data? Because it may, and if so, exactly what happens? And that's exactly what I can answer with Manta. So for instance, if I take a look at birth name and I want to go, okay, does it just take it exactly as it is? What's going to happen? I can see the transformation logic itself. So this is what Manta understands from the code that it actually analyzes from the metadata and simply denotes that for the birth name attribute of party table, it is the result of the function call NVL and either it takes the first value or it takes um, this code name and A or val code table value and A, which I can see is a string. So for instance, if I were a data scientist, I was working with a massive table called party, I would want to know if there can be null values. It's going to be very, very important for me. Can it be null? Maybe it can, maybe it not, cannot. But right now I already know it can't simply because of the way how it's calculated, how it's defined. It can either be the value or it can be string n slash a, which is going to be fairly important for me doing any kind of work. Of course, there could be some kind of business rules. It could be just date birth could be for instance, um, birth year plus something or it could be in a different format or something or it could be completely changed it could be aggregated there's of course a lot of things that you can do with data and right here we could see the exact transformation on attribute level marek while you are there there's a question that has come up it says if mm -hmm. i have measures in my bi report and i want to see the lineage of this measure like the fields used to derive it mm -hmm. can you see that lineage in manta that's exactly what you would see. So essentially, if you would start from the end, uh, you would see the upstream lineage where your data has come from, and you would see that right to the absolute upstream system. And that's actually something that I would like to take a look at right now. I, we're, we can actually combine this with the other part of Manta that I would like to show. So in Manta, whenever you run the scan to analyze your systems, the result of that scan is saved as a particular revision. So right here, for instance, we can see we're looking at revision 18.18, which was taken in October of 2020. Essentially, a revision can be understood as a snapshot of the environment at a particular point in time. Now, what I can do very easily is just go back, so let's say November 2018, and let me just say that I would like to see um, 
let's see if I, I actually don't have a report here, but what I can do, uh, let's say that I would take a look at right here, revision 15, still not there, et cetera, et cetera. I could very easily go see exactly what's in my environment. But what's far more stronger than that and far more interesting is the ability to actually compare the revisions to really see what changes have been done at various points in time. So for instance, if I take, let's say, revision 14 is the older one, and let's just take a look at Microsoft SQL just to change things up. And in Microsoft SQL, we have a table called party. And right here, I want to know what changes have been done in the lineage. So I'm actually going to use some filters here to clean up the lineage graph a bit and hit visualize. And I can already see that the lineage graph has different color coding, it's all in gray. However, if I zoom out, I can see that there is an object completely in green as well as some highlighted attributes. And if I zoom in, I can see that this particular object is called customers and it's a report in SSRS. So as you were asking, if you, for instance, have a certain BI tool, you select the report, you could do it on measures, you can do it on the entire report, and you would be able to see exactly where that's coming from. Right here, it's filtered, so we don't see the transformations. However, we are, for instance, seeing that it's come from um, rep client view or table, which was in a data warehouse schema, and that the data there has come from a certain historical table. So I can find it very, so I can have it very easy to see exactly where it's come from, even what transformations have been done and so on and so on. So I can see that this report is actually new. It was not there previously, therefore it's green. Similar to that, on the left side, I have certain attributes in green color right here, meaning they are new. And I also have some of them in red color, for instance, name first. Red color meaning that the object is no longer there, it has been removed. In this case, if I actually take a look at it, I can see that currently fname is providing data to this name first attribute, whereas previously it was named first. So likely it is just a change of model. Likely the, somebody just changed what the column is called, but even then realistically is a change of model. And if there would, for instance, be any procedure reading the data from there, explicitly mentioning the column name, that procedure would no longer work. And this can actually be very, very important when working with BI solutions once again. I think that everybody uh, here on the call has probably run into a solution or at least heard of it, where let's say somebody has a report and the report is absolutely wonderful, keeps giving numbers everybody trusts, and all of a sudden something happens and the report just stops working. Either doesn't even produce anything or just gives the craziest numbers that everybody knows cannot be correct. Now, that can only mean one thing, that something has changed in the data lineage pipeline. Either um, the code the, in, that was used for the, let's say, transformations in the report in the BI tool was changed, or a definition of table has been changed, data type has been changed, can even be as minor as that, but there needed to be a certain change. Maybe something was added, uh, maybe something was removed, but that's exactly what we need to take a look at with Realistically, if we need to solve this manually, we need to really find this out, find root cause analysis. With Manta, I can just see it immediately. Right now, I've just taken a look at the lineage and I can immediately see what changes have been done. Of course, there are many, many, many more features to Manta. There is, for instance, indirect lineage, giving you capabilities to see, let's say, dependencies in your lineage pipeline to see what affects something rather than where the data is flowing. As we we're mentioning, there is possibilities for various perspectives of looking at the lineage from a different point of view, like you're collect grouping various objects. Manta also is an API that you can use to work with the lineage programmatically. It's possible to import various metadata into Manta, but really the core of Manta is truly to scan various systems, connect to them, extract and analyze, and show you what the environments really look like, how they're connected to each other, and give you proper insights so that you can easily understand your own environment. And since demo, demo session is uh, meant to be, let's say, short and sweet, uh, that's going to be it for the demo. So I would like to ask you if you have any questions that you would like to go through regarding Manta or data lineage in general. I don't see any questions around the table at the moment. 
so I have a question for the audience, Drew. And the, the question is, you know, I've been hearing a lot of talk and a lot of hype around um, around Snowflake and Databricks and these new cloud platforms. So I'm really curious to understand what the uptake of those technologies are in South Africa. So um, guys think, out there, Jerry, just before you go, Howard has got a question. So Howard, yeah. Yeah, the question I have in terms of, of this tool is um, one of the challenges I had at, at some stage is to work through a lot of Excels that had VBA code that did downloads and prep and, mm. and transformations. And the VBA code was not something that a lot of tools could understand. Mm. Right, right. And your question regarding that is? How does man handle it? How does man to handle that? Right, right, right. So, unfortunately, it is understandable that um, let's say VBA code is something that uh, not a lot of tools can analyze. And unfortunately, I have to say that it is the same case for Manta. With regards to the technologies that we do support out of the box and can scan, uh, you can find the list right here on our website, getmanta.com. Under section platform, we have supported scanners. So you can see how exactly do we, let's say, fit your own environment. And for instance, um, let, when it comes to um, Excel, we are actually capable of analyzing Excel code. That is true. However, uh, what, essentially the way that it works is that it's designed right. to okay. understand where the data comes from, from databases, understand how pivot tables are made and so on. But right. if you have some kind of, let's say, VBA code, we unfortunately are not able to analyze that. Okay. I would, however, mention uh, Gary was already mentioning it, that Manta has capabilities for pushing in your own metadata, that of course core of Manta is to pull metadata from systems and analyze them, but it's also possible to push your own metadata into Manta. And that can actually be fairly useful when, for instance, we don't um, support certain technology as you are able to de define the lineage graph either manually or even automatically. It is, it is basically done through CSV files, which define the lineage ground. There is a whole framework for it called Open Manta. And we see our customers go both ways. They, for instance, have solutions which generate metadata based on what comes in, what comes out, and then give that to Manta. And Manta visualizes the lineage in these solutions that we cannot solve out of the box. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Gary, what was your question? I think the, my question was around uh, Snowflake and Databricks and these sort of new emerging cloud-based analytics platforms. I'm curious to understand uh, how how custom you know people on the on the call, whether anybody in the audience or the, in the corporates in South Africa are actually starting to adopt those technologies. So Gary, I can I I know of two customers that I I can I wouldn't want to share them publicly. One using Databricks, uh, it's a big hotel group, uh, and the other one on on the um, which is the Snowflake. Um, I've actually done some work with Nora in Wolf. I don't know if you if you remember she presented here. Uh, she, they are using that technology extensively for lots of the ETL and metadata driven stuff. So she can share quite a few um, customers that that use that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else here? Uh, Gary, question for you. I've heard people use the term provenance. Yeah. What is the difference between provenance and lineage? I don't know, Drew. I, so. I can answer you. All right. Provenance is, is, is a little bit more than understanding where the data comes to rest and almost the data flow diagram. Provenance talks about the people and the trust of the person that's shipping you that information. So provenance actually came from the art, um, uh, from the art world, where the experts were battling in some cases to detect a fraudulent painting. And they then found it a lot easier to understand who it was coming from to, to detect fraudulent data or quality of, of, the, of the art. And here I thought it came from the wine industry. So <laughs> I see there's a question from uh, Manrich. It's or Manrich is that is it in the roadmap for Manta to link into AWS Glue service? 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So AWS Glue is a technology we are currently investigating in, analyzing, uh, but there are no, let's say there is no ETA. So that's currently where we are with regards to AWS Glue. But what I would mention, Manta does have capabilities for. Um, there is an option for something we call annotation scanner, and it's a specific scanner of, let's say, scripts, um, originally designed actually specifically for AWS Glue, which uses um, Python-generated scripts, or you can even write your own Python scripts, and you put certain annotations or let's say comments into the code, which basically say here's the SQL code, here's um, saving into S3, into a certain file. And that's exactly what Manta takes a look at these particular comments. And then that's being placed, that's being analyzed by Manta and pushed into the lineage graph. Renaud, I see there's a, there's a question around yeah. uh, yeah. Microsoft yeah. Azure data catalog. So I, I'm not super familiar with, with um, the Microsoft product. So I don't want to talk out of turn, but generally a, a catalog is going to, is going to be focused on, on, um, on the schemas and, and the data sources themselves. And they're going to, they tend to be quite platforms, quite, quite vendor specific. So, you know, if I'm an Informatica catalog, I'm going to be very good at Informatica. I may not be quite as good as everything else. What you can see if you're looking at, um, you know, if you're going to have a look at the Get Manta website that Manu, that uh, Marek has got shared, is that Manta's core focus is around, you know, really understanding the technical details of moving data. Um, and Paul, the same answer for you. It's, it's around the technical details of moving data. So, you know, our core strength is that we can connect to 40 or 50 different data sources. And we understand, for example, the difference between PLSQL and Microsoft SQL. So there's these, these little nuances in, in SAS, in, uh, in an Informatica script versus a data stage script that, that uh, Manta really focuses on understanding all of that complexity and presenting it into a uniform interface. And then certainly um, the technical metadata and the lineage you're getting from uh, Manta could be pushed into, for example, Informatica Data Catalog or potentially Microsoft um, Azure Data Catalog. So they, they tend to be complementary solutions. Um, hopefully right, that answers right. the question. Yeah, uh, Gary is absolutely correct. I would just add, it's very important to really to know that lineage can definitely be a part of governance. Like as we were mentioning, many of our customers use Manta for governance. However, we are not a data catalog. Um, it is definitely not ideal to take a look at us that way because we are to fail, uh, let's say, many check marks when it comes to being a good data catalog because we are focused on lineage. So exactly as Gary was mentioning, if you would compare lineage against those other solutions, truth is that it wouldn't be as strong. Matt is really focused on being good at lineage. And that really often goes together with cataloging, of course, because the truth is that how do you catalog what's in your environment if you don't really understand where it's coming from? How do you catalog which data sets you're working with or who is their owner or whatever, let's say steward or what is the terminology that you're going to be using if you don't really understand what changes are being done, if there's new data coming in, and if there's new data coming in, how much can you trust the data if it's not been, let's say, validated or something similar? And all of that always just goes to question, what is my data lineage pipeline? So very often, Manta is being used in conjunction with other solutions, very commonly from data cataloging, ver vertical or sector domain, let's say, but of course, some of them are also from different ones. So for instance, you can see Atacama being here, uh, more of a data quality solution. So our integrations are definitely very suitable to create more robust solutions. And not only do we do our own integrations out of the box, but we also provide our customers with an API as well as exports. So we have certain customers who, for instance, use the metadata that Manta captures in order to push them into their own in-house developed metadata management solutions. So they, for instance, for what is, whatever is the reason they decided about it, historically, they use their own solutions. They don't use a vendor for metadata cataloging or anything similar. However, they use Manta to further enrich in those solutions. And, and just to add to that, you know, if you're gonna have a look again at, at, the, at Manta's blog, what you'll see is that every three months, uh, 
they're releasing a new a new release of Mansa, and typically the focus is on either bringing in a new integration, so it will be adding a new technology. So you know, uh, Manik has asked around Amazon Glue as an example that would at some point be put into the um, the roadmap. And you will get a new technology platform added. And that, that's one of the reasons I was asking about Snowflake and Databricks. It's to, it's to try and understand where uh, technology is going because that's driving where um, Mant is investing its integration efforts. So either adding in new technologies, but also extending the, the technologies and the, and the technical detail, uh, the technical understanding of the technologies to which we already have an integration. So really our focus is around delivering you the best possible uh, lineage and then delivering that into the catalog of choice. Yeah, right. There's a, an additional question there if you guys want to look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I may Emelin. ask you to read the question. Can I go down to the detail of the ETL, ETL mapping where I can see the transformations in the lineage? Yes, short answer. Maybe you can just show that. <laughs> <laughs> Gary with a very short and efficient answer. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So let's just start, for instance, at Informatica Car Center. Uh, we do have some examples here. Um, let's go, for instance, workflow copies here and client to SQL Server. So I am basically right now, the way that I'm working with Manta initially is that I'm working, I'm taking a look at level of detail from workflow level. So it's just general movement from data to somewhere. I could actually just specify exactly session level, filter transformation, et cetera, et cetera. Right now I'm looking from a relatively high level. And once I visualize, of course, I can very easily just select. I can drop down, collapse, or let's say expand the lineage. And I see it on attribute level. So I see essentially right in Informatica Power Center, the cores themselves, the attributes. And depending on the transformation, I may see exactly what it does. But of course, it depends exactly what is there. For instance, right here, I am seeing that a filter is being used. And the filter condition is being that that ID is not being null. So that filters the data set and that exactly goes right here into this table called iCustomer. Then the data is going through a transformation in Microsoft SQL, historical customer, et cetera, et cetera. Now there is something behind this. I could expand and further and further and further go into downstream how the data is being used. Mario, can you can you possibly just touch a little bit on on setting up Manta? Because I think what people mm -hmm. may not understand is actually just how quick and easy it is to get a new data set or a new data source onboarded and to start to, to harvest the, the lineage. Right, right, right. Yes, absolutely. So with Manta, uh, we were talking about the way that it works is that we let's say connect two systems, analyze, extract metadata, analyze them, and so on. Now, with regards to how this is being done. Manta actually has its own administrator user interface where you simply create new connections. You specify exactly, let's say, which system you're going to be analyzing, the Microsoft SQL database. You simply just put in the actual user which's going to be there. And then whenever you run the scan, which also can be actually done from admin UI, that all of that is being done automatically. So essentially when it comes to configuring Manta, the connections themselves, there is not that much effort simply because Manta is very much focused on being automated. We really want our solution to pull the metadata. We want to have this pull approach and therefore the administrators do have it incredibly easy to configure any kind of connections and further on see this in Manta. I would also just like to mention um, definitely uh, Gary was right about mentioning Manta's block. So if you have any kind of, if you want to see history of Manta, what has been done in various releases and such, you can definitely find it very easily in our blog. But what can be very interesting for, um, let's say, not that much of investigation, Manta, getmanta.com also contains a library which contains certain documents, which are white papers, use case studies, and so on and so on. If you're interested in knowing how Manta has been used in certain environments and for what cases specifically. And what it also contains is various videos. So just like um, today's session, many of the sessions are recording, recorded, they are webinars, and they range from many, many different topics. They range from topics such as what is lineage and how do you, why would you have lineage? 
to really specific cases, um, really specify or specific industries. So like you can see here, for instance, that there was specifically the lineage for healthcare. There is a specific use case right here where there is talk about it. Or there is even very technical ones, like right here, for instance, using Mantis API for certain automation. So there can, so you can very easily find various um, lineage-related videos as well as white papers here on our website, which may give you, even if you think that, for instance, lineage might not be a topic that is that important for you right now, you might really not be seeing, let's say, all of the ideas how lineage may be helping you. So this is definitely a very good place to see more about Manta as well as the importance of data lineage. Okay, I see there is another question. Can you display export functionality to users? The usual question, can I guess the list of tables, which are my upstream dependencies for a specific table, column, store, proc, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the question. That is possible to do, and there are actually multiple ways of to do it. Uh, right here in the visualization, you can actually see this export button. Um, I, before we take a look at the CSV exports, I would mention that it is possible to generate a permalink, and it can actually be really interesting when, for instance, you're writing a documentation for a certain solution. And let's say, just to be more specific, it's your commissioning solution. Now you write the solution, and truth is that the documentation to it, sometimes people forget to update it, sometimes they don't. But at the end of the day, let's say three years later, there's a good chance that either the people have forgotten or have left the organization and somebody new would like to know how exactly it's implemented. So I typically, they need to go through the code. What you can do is actually generate this permalink, which will generate a link that will always go to the newest implementation and you could add this to the documentation. So for instance, if there is a certain calculation, somebody defines it there and you would like to actually see or the person in documentation how it's being done they could very easily see this now with regards to the let's say csv exports it is possible to generate an csv export right here to um, have a list of objects that are in the lineage you could very easily just configure this to be or choose the perimeter to only show upstream lineage so where the data is coming from or only downstream both work and you would have a total list of all the columns, all of the objects that are found within the, let's say right here, within the lineage graph. And that would already be very helpful. Manta also has an API, which you can use to query the repository contents. So for instance, if you would like to do this uh, more dynamically, either you already have a solution which you would like to have access to this information. So you would want that solution to have access to this, or um, you would want to collect it every new, let's say, revision for various important objects. You could use the API to always to find out exactly what are the downstream dependent, what are the upstream dependencies, what are the downstream objects very easily. And of course, there are complete exports of everything that is in the graph database. So for instance, it is possible to, to overall export what's in Manta into your own relational database and then query that. So for instance, if that works better for you, uh, you would like to your, you have, for instance, have more data engineers in your environment than programmers of applications, then of course it may be better suitable for you to just write a select query that will analyze exactly those dependencies. So definitely possible to do with Manta. Cool, and anybody else? No, I guess uh, in that case, um, Gary and Marek, Thanks so much for your for your input, for your time. Howard, do you want to say anything more before we go? No, yeah, I'd just like to thank the guys. It's, it's really nice to see the tools in action, things that we've battled with, just being able to visualize it. Um, that's fantastic, thank you. Yeah, I find it's that. interesting to see hmm. the progress of, of uh, the lineage tools, because it's an area I think that has been yeah. on the back foot for a while and has caught most of us out more than once. Um, so yeah, it's good news to to go uh, put another put another brick in that the wall. Perfect, perfect. I'm very happy to hear that. I'm very happy to hear that lineage is often a topic you're running into. Uh, if you have any, let's say, things you can you wonder about regarding Manta specifically, you can of course also find it on our website. 
Um, for context, of course, Gary can definitely help you, but there's also further context on our website as well if you're interested in more. Right, Gary, you wanna wrap up? Yeah, so I'm just gonna share my contact details as well so that if people are watching the video and they've got questions and know how to get hold of me, people are able to get hold of me. Marek, thank you so much for making the time available. I, I know I chat to the Dharma people a lot, so it's always nice for, for them to have a, a fresh voice, and in this case, a, a, not a fresh face, but uh, hopefully sometime in the future we'll get that right. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. We had a good turnout today, and, and I really hope that the presentation was of interest to you. And if you've got something specific, get hold of me, and, and you know we can, uh, we can help you to set up a POC or, or to take all your questions further. All right, Thanks very much, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah, the LinkedIn meetup, got all the details about future upcoming sessions. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if anybody's got any suggestions for future topics, if anybody's brave enough to volunteer to present, we welcome you with open arms. It's a good learning experience to present here in, in what is a safe environment. Thanks. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much.